Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com welcoming you to Woodblock Wednesday where, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese woodblock prints, paintings, history and culture. I want to thank you all of you for sending me all those notes uh, in the past couple weeks. I was under the weather a couple weeks ago and I didn't, uh, wasn't up to making a Woodblock Wednesday video. And then last week I got really busy uh, working on my website and I'm still uh, working on my website. I, I will have a new update. It's going to be my first update of the year. Um, considering with all this COVID stuff, you know, I just, we, we stopped operations and we were just, we were waiting it out. And now that basically the city of Chicago has opened up and most of the country is now opening up, um, I think it's, it's a safe time to start up business again, uh, particularly I was concerned about my staff and then shipping and all of those things. So rest assured, uh, we will be able to uh, assist you if you have any questions or you're interested in purchase any, purchasing anything. The update will go up uh, on Friday, so there's something to look forward to. And if you're not uh, subscribed to my email list, uh, please let me encourage you to sign up. Uh, you could go to the website at imp, at uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com. That's the website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, and uh, you know, and sign up for the the um, the email list, and you'll certainly get emails from me letting you know when the next exhibitions go up. And the next one is Friday. Uh, that's hopefully. Um, uh, a certainty. We're still working on it, but I, I think it'll go out on Friday. Now, uh, the last couple Woodblock Wednesdays, I have featured uh, prints, uh, floral prints by Shinhanga artists, and I thought today I would sh uh, highlight a floral, uh, actually a couple prints uh, that illustrate flowers by my favorite artist, uh, which is Koshiro Onshi. And um, these two prints were, were executed about 1928, 1929, and uh, they're extraordinarily beautiful as well as being rare. And I, I have them out on my coffee table here in my um, sitting room. And, and the reason why is that the table is full of artwork for the next uh, exhibition, which is Friday. And you know, there just wasn't any, any room. And uh, so um, I've moved the two prints uh, into the sitting room. The light's not perfect, but we'll see if we could make this work. So without further ado, let's have a look at the table. So I'm going to pan out so you could, you could see that these two beautiful prints uh, illustrate uh, images of um, designs of poppies. Uh, poppy flowers and so I think we'll start with this one. Both of them were produced by Onchi, uh, Koshiro Onchi, and he was a Sosaku Hanga artist. For those of you who, who aren't familiar with Onchi, he started working about uh, right in art school around 1915, 1914 were some of his earliest known woodblock prints. And Onchi is credited with producing the first work of abstraction in 1915, if you could believe that. It's very, very early for not just Japan, but for any any part of the world, really. It's right uh, on par with, with uh, Europe. Um, and so he produced the first work of abstraction. He was really interested in abstraction but he, he, he basically turned to representational um, images because these designs were easier to understand. The Japanese weren't necessarily ready for abstraction at that point. So, and he wanted to promote hanga, which, which is woodblock uh, prints, and particularly sosaku hanga, meaning creative woodblock prints. And the way that these were produced the artist uh, had complete and sole control of the of the printing process, of the design, everything. So from the inception of the design, it was the artist's own idea. The carving was typically done by the artist and the, as well as the printing. And what 
set uh, Onchi apart from other artists is that he was one of the first artists that encouraged um, printmakers to imbue their their prints with a an emotional quality that expressed the you know sort of the state of the printer or the artist at the time. So Onchi, you know, if you if you had one or two impressions of the same design by Onchi, each impression would look pretty differently. And they would those differences of course would reflect the different aspects that the artist wanted to bring out in that particular impression. Uh, maybe it was an emotional sort of thing or psychological uh, quality in the print. And so Onchi really was interested in not just the carving, but also the printing and, how, and the variances that one could achieve with, you know, adjustments and other things that artists could do. So uh, production of Whitblock prints wasn't necessarily something that was uh, related to making multiples, but it was a process for Onchi that was inherently Japanese, that was a great process to be able to sort of express himself. And I think these two poppy designs are, are a really wonderful example of his representational work from the, from the late 1920s. So as I said, these two prints were done about 1928, and the interesting thing about it is, as far as I know, this work, um, I can't locate another impression anywhere. So this, this print might be unique. It's, uh, it's extraordinarily um, rare, if, if not unique, and it's wonderful that I'm, I'm able to show this uh, to all of you. And this work is not unique. I've been able to find one other impression but it's very, very rare. And for those of you who love books and are into um, all of these reference books on Japanese prints, particularly Sosaku Hanga, uh, this is the exact impression that's in the Hanga Taike, the three volume um, reference on 20th century prints, this exact impression. So that's how rare the, uh, these prints are. You know, when, when you have the exact impression that's in, in, the, in one of the most important reference books on 20th century prints, it's, uh, it's a really neat thing to have. And I'm delighted to be able to share both of these designs with all of you. So we'll start with this one. And what we have here, obviously, is a beautiful design of uh, poppies. We have a, a poppy flower here in full bloom. We have a, a portion of one here. And then in the background here, we have some poppies that are, that are you know, moving up and about to bloom. You can kind of see the curvature of, of the stem here. You, you know, what you would normally see on these poppies, this, this print has a very lively, lifelike quality to it. And both of these prints are as, as representational as they get. In person, they actually almost look like photographs in some ways. And I have to say that I think that's no coincidence. In the late 1920s and 30s, Onchi became very interested in photography and did a series of black and white photos of flowers and other elements found in nature. And so these prints tie in really well with that body of photographic work. Um, and of course, I think what he was doing, he was really inspired by his photography and by these scenes of nature and translated that strong sense of realism into these woodblock prints. And when you look at this print, you have to th wonder, the, the same artist that excelled in abstraction, that in fact created the first abstract work in Japan, and it might be the full, first abstract work in Japan period, not just necessarily in printed form, you know, and then look at this, uh, a design that's so realistic and beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, it really shows his depth as an artist, his ability to produce um, artwork with, at such, such depth, such, uh, and with such creativity from the representational side to the abstract side. And, you know, I see a lot of people joining, 
joining us right now. So hello everyone. Let me encourage you to watch the video from the beginning. There was a, a, a good introduction on what we're looking at. Uh, but these are two prints by Koshiro Onchi, um, done in 1928-29. So uh, I'm going to zoom in on the print so you could see what I mean about how realistic this design is. This angle here is really interesting because it really gives you a sense of the um, the colors uh, at play here on this print. It's it's amazing again to consider that this is in in fact a woodblock print and the detail that Onchi's able to produce in these flowers here and in, in the the also the the shading here is very surprising, especially for an artist who's known to be very messy and his prints are more emotional than they are um, representational or even detailed. And here, those critics should be silenced because honestly, this is as, as detailed as any print that I've seen, whether Shinhanga or Sosaku, Sosaku Hanga or contemporary. But of course, we have the hands of the master at work and you could see this like sort of bleeding of the pigments into the paper. And that's that really expressive quality in Onchi's prints. And for those of you who are interested in Onchi's prints and may be interested in, in, in pursuing maybe a print for your own collection, you always want to make sure that a print by Onchi is printed in, in a kind of a loose way. You see the pigment here, it's not, uh, it's not, sorry, my phone was acting up. The pigment here uh, was, is kind of bleeding out. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see a print that looks perfect because that's not how OMG printed. And um, so I'm going to move over to the next print. You know, I apologize for creating shadows over these works. Uh, again, this is my sitting room, not my not the room with with my large table where I normally are, but uh, that that table's full of of artwork for my next exhibition. But on this print here, uh, it we have the same motif, uh, we, his continuation of poppies uh, in full bloom. Here we have the the poppy just about to um, extend outward in bloom, as we have in this design. Now I should point out that these two designs were produced independently. They're not a diptych. And it's interesting because the colors are so similar. And in, I'm looking at the video and it, this color here looks similar to this one, but in real life, uh, this one's a little bit more orange and this one's much more red. And this one here is more of a, of a violet. Uh, or even a, a little bit of fuchsia is in, in, that, dis, in, in that portion of the um, poppy. And so it's interesting. He created two separate designs that were never meant to be put together. And, um, you know, it's funny. I've been able to locate both of them uh, as hard as they are to find. And, uh, but they're not meant to be put together as a diptych. So this is as, as I mean, you can, I can move this a little bit closer, you could see, but really they are two different compositions, but I thought it would be neat to show them side by side, um, possibly for the first time publicly. So, uh, but it's the same, same effect here. Onchi cr created a, a beautifully realistic um, scene of poppies. You know, I want to draw your attention to the detail carving around the, the, the flower here inside and as well as here. And so, you know, I'm going to move back a little bit. My apologies at, for the weird angle, but we're, this is the, as best as I can do here on my coffee table. I think for many of you who are familiar with Onshi's work, these, these two designs might surprise you. 
based on their realism um, and also just the way that you know he 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 treated the subject it there's there's a lot more care in the printing they're much more centered uh, they're emotional they're they're psychological they're powerful but they're also aesthetically beautiful um, and I hear some feedback from some collectors who who, who don't necessarily like a lot of Omichi's designs because they're too dark or too emotional. And that's one of the reasons why I love them, in fact. And those aspects of Omichi's prints are actually in here. They're, it's just a different interpretation. And so, you know, if I could draw your attention to this area again, there, this, there's a, a frailty, a sensitivity, a... a, a and I, dare I add a little bit of a, a psychological quality to the way that these flowers have been rendered, um, particularly within this composition here. So these two prints are just, I believe, they're one of his best, if I could call them one, but these two designs are among his best um, florals or representational um, designs. Uh, they're they're done with such care, some such beauty, su such sensitivity to the subject that you know the the they appear you know as I mentioned they have the element of realism that you would imagine in his photography um, that he was producing in the late twenties and early thirties. So anyway, it, it's been a pleasure to be able to share these two wonderful, rare, uh, one of them may be unique Onchi prints and um here let me flip the the camera so thank you very much for joining me uh on our installment of woodblock wednesday uh as i mentioned at the beginning of the video my next update will be on friday so please have a look if you have not joined uh, my email list feel free to go to my website collecting at collecting japanese prints.com and just click on uh, contact us email and you can sign up for the email list. And I see a bunch of you who have joined um, the video just towards the tail end of it. Let me encourage you to go to the beginning of the video. I'll be posting the video in a, in a moment. And uh, you know, I can, it, you'll learn more about uh, Onchi and the, the beginning of his sort of realistic uh, period of, of florals uh, from the, the mid to late 1920s. So, Thank you again uh, for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next week on our next Woodblock Wednesday. Bye.